We jump in right where the last part left off, with the Joes facing off against their now mind-controlled family members. No previously on G.I. Joe or anything, just straight to the action. Keep up, kids, we don't have time to slow down and explain things to you. Unsurprisingly, as the Joes start making heartfelt appeals to each of their personal relatives, Cobra's hold on them begins to waver. I warned you this would happen! The Baroness calls Dr. Marx, the mad scientist who helped develop this whole mind control hooju, and he's reluctant to dial things up because it might destroy the minds of their captives. Wait. So you're doing crazy and no doubt illegal experiments for a terrorist organization, but you're suddenly concerned about the well-being of your test subjects? This is why you don't contract this kind of work out to civilians. While the Joes are gassing their families, some of the other Joes are taking those extremely delicate and highly explosive crystals for a ride over some rough terrain. Because I guess the hammer test from the previous episode wasn't conclusive enough? Speaking of plans too dumb to work, the guys who were trying to gas their families seem utterly baffled that the gas didn't manage to penetrate the protective suits that Cobra put them in. Then they catch them all in a big net, but the Baroness is at least half a step ahead of them and activates some kind of net-destroying weapon in their suits. Everyone's super worried that they're going to plummet to their deaths until someone realizes that they'll probably be fine if they fall into the water, which is exactly where they were plummeting toward in the first place, and man are we unobservant! Being a sailor, Shipwreck rushes to fish them out of the water... on his motorcycle, but Spirit stops him. No! You must free their minds before you can free their bodies! Suddenly I'm in the mood to watch some early 90s MTV. Anyway, then Cobra scoops up their hypno-captives in a giant goldfish net, and they set them marching mindlessly toward the giant Joe vehicle carrying those crystals. Dusty takes a cue from his Transformers counterpart, Smokescreen, and uses the same seemingly ineffectual trick based on his codename. But the Baroness handily outsmarts this, as she outsmarts all their tactics by constantly shouting, FASTER CAPTIVES, GET THEM! She's like that guy in every action movie yelling, MOVE, MOVE, MOVE! Which I assume must be helpful to someone, but I can't imagine who. The Joes infiltrate Dr. Marx's lab, and he completely folds after one Joe slightly raises their voice to him. Dude, you work for Cobra! Grow a pair! The Baroness manages to break open the transport carrying the crystals, and she uses Shipwreck's young nephew to threaten them all with a rock. Now, let's not be too hasty, guys. We're not sure what would happen to those crystals if someone hit them with a rock. It could all work out fine, as far as we know. Thankfully, Scarret and her team blow up the mind control machine before we can find out. Then the Baroness sends a bunch of planes to destroy the crystals, because I guess she has the same IF I CAN'T HAVE THEM, NO ONE CAN setting that every villain in every 80s cartoon had. And the Joe's families all volunteer to pick up laser rifles and fight, which is actually kind of badass. Especially old Charlie Iron Knife's grandfather, who I don't think is exactly in the same fighting shape as some of the others. Then the Cobra Helicarrier, which I can only assume they stole from S.H.I.E.L.D. and painted a bunch of snakes all over it, descends and tries to snatch up the crystals with their giant claw game style claws. But Grandpa Iron Knife totally saves the day by shooting down a Cobra jet with a rifle from like 500 yards and forcing it to crash into the cables holding the claws. Yeah, that old dude kinda rocks. The crystals smash into the ground and explode on impact, which I assume the Joes found an extremely unexpected outcome. There's a weird epilogue where the Baroness goes after one more Joes family, Gung Ho's, but he comes from hardy swamp folk. What do you call a hillbilly from the bayou? A, a swamp billy? Anyway, he has a giant family filled with tough rednecks who handily defeat her and her men and force her to eat gumbo. Which is not a callback that I planned at all, but it's nice when the show plays along with my stupid running jokes. 